This video is all about margin of error and confidence intervals. Now, you might remember earlier in the unit, we talked about margin of error, and we had this formula right here, where we would find the margin of error by doing 1 over the square root of n, where n was the sample size in a survey or something. Um, this is another way of calculating margin of error involving the z-score. So this is saying, uh, the, uh, by this way of calculating margin of error, we do plus or minus a z-score times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. n is still the sample size. So you can see some similarities here, but now we have z-score and standard deviation involved. If they are talking about confidence intervals, if you hear that phrase, um, then go ahead and use this formula instead of the old formula, okay? Confidence intervals is like a code word to use uh, z-scores and standard of deviation. Okay, other than that, it's going to be the same thing that we did uh, before. Now, um, the z-scores are just going to come from a table, and so they will be given to you. If we want a 90% level of confidence, um, we'll use this z-score, 95%, this z-score, and so on. And uh, we'll just be plugging these numbers right in here in the formula. Let's look at a couple of examples. A sample of normally distributed scores of 40 eighth grade students has a mean of 82 and a standard deviation of 15. Find the 95% confidence interval for the mean of all the reading scores. Okay, um, so if we want to be 95% confident that the real um, reading scores are somewhere in the interval for everybody, not just the sample, we can use the formula for margin of error, the new formula. Okay, so first of all we need to know what the z-score is going to be. So for this margin of error we're going to do plus or minus and uh, for the 95% confidence interval, the z-score is 1.96. So we go uh, 1.96 times. Um, now, the, uh, the according to the formula, we need the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. Okay, now the standard deviation is 15, and uh, we need the square root of the sample size. Well, they said 40 eighth grade students. So that's the sample size right there. So um, we just need to crank this out uh, using our calculator. So so we have 1.96. And then we have uh, 15 over the square root of 40. So 15 over the square root of 40. OK. So that gives us 4.65. Going to round up. Okay, so that is our margin of error. So um, we will use this. We will add and subtract um, to find the confidence interval. So the sample had a mean of 82. So that mean is what we are going to add and subtract, um, add to and subtract from. Okay, so first of all, let's subtract. So we'll do 82 minus 4.65 okay and then we'll do 82 plus 4.65 
and that will give us our confidence interval. Okay, so that's 77.35. And uh, that's going to be 86.65. Okay, so this will be our confidence interval. All right, our 95% confidence interval. Our, it's 95% because that's the uh, Z score that we used. Okay, all right, the Z score determines the confidence interval. All right, that means we can be 95% confident that the uh, true mean for all of the um, eighth graders is somewhere within this interval. We can be 95% sure. All right, let's talk cholesterol. The serum cholesterol level was collected for a group of 525 college women. The mean of the same was 191.7 milligrams per 100 milliliters with a standard deviation of 41. Construct a 90% confidence level or interval for the mean serum cholesterol level. All right, 99% confidence, uh, sorry, 90% confidence interval. So that means we're going to do our um, plus or minus the z-score. So at 90% 90, 90 the z-score is 1.645. Okay, so 1.645. All right, now we're going to do the standard deviation, which is 41 over the square root of the sample size, which was 525. Okay, that is going to give us the margin of error. All right, so here we go. If we just put that in the cap, it will look very much like this. So we get this, um, 2.94. Okay, so um, what is the mean? The mean is 191.7. So that is what we will add and subtract from. So our confidence interval is going to come from doing 191.7 minus 2.95 and 191.7 plus 2.95. Okay. That gives us 188.75 to 194.65. So, we can be 90% sure that the mean cholesterol level for all college women is somewhere inside this interval. We can be 90% sure of that. Okay, part B, construct a 95% confidence interval. Well, um, understand this. If you want more confidence, we're going to have to make our interval bigger. All right, so the, um, the bigger we make this interval, the more sure we can be that the truth is in there somewhere. So just have that in your mind. So we will expect that um, as we uh, make this more confident, all right, we're going from 90% confidence to 95%, we're expecting this interval to be wider. But um, let's just use a formula. So um, we're going to be doing plus or minus the z-score for 95%. Okay, um, that z-score is 1.96. All 
All right, this part remains the same. So 41 over the square root of 525. Okay, that's going to give us a new margin of error. So let's put that in the calculator. Okay, so there it is, and there it is. So 3.51, got to round up. Okay, so again, the mean was 191.7. Okay, so that's why we're going to do 191.7 minus 3.51 and 191.7 plus 3.51. So this will be our 95% confidence interval. We can be 95% sure that the actual mean cholesterol level for all college women is somewhere in this interval. We're 95% sure of that. Notice that as predicted, this interval is a little bit wider than the one before. Not much, but the first number is a little bit lower and the second number is a little bit higher. So the wider the interval, the more confident we can be. Now, suppose you hear a claim that the mean serum cholesterol level for women in college is 200. What would your reaction be, um, considering the answers that we got for A and B? Uh, well, we'd say uh, we're very skeptical about the 200. We're very surprised because um, we were 95% sure um, that the true uh, mean cholesterol level is somewhere within this interval. And 200 is significantly higher than that, all right? It's higher than both intervals, but we're uh, especially surprised that it's so far out of our 95% confidence interval, all right? Because uh, 19 times out of 20, we'd expect the truth to fall within this confidence interval. So this, this should be, if this is accurate, this should be a rare, rare mistake. Okay, so there you go. Take a look at number three. The two intervals shown here and here are confidence intervals for um, some true average resonance frequency for all tennis rackets. All right, so these are two confidence intervals. We're talking about uh, the frequency of a tennis racket what is the value of the sample mean resonance frequency All right so b the key word here is what's the mean um, well remember when we find these confidence intervals um, remember like on the previous problem the mean was this hundred and ninety one point seven okay and what did we do we, uh, we subtracted from it and we added to it and we got these numbers. But do you understand the mean should be right dead center, all right? Uh, right in the middle of your interval because of the way we subtracted and added. So if they give us some um, intervals, if I want to find the mean, it should be right in the middle. So we should be able to just um, find, uh, find the mean of these numbers, add them up and divide by two. Okay, so um, that's what I would do. All right, so, uh, so our sample mean, which we could show by uh, X bar, should be 114.4 plus 115.6 uh, divided by 2. And uh, we should get the same answer uh, if I use this inter interval. Okay, um, so look, it turns out to be exactly 115. So that must have been the sample mean. Okay, the confidence interval for one of the intervals is 90% and the other one is 99%. Which one is which? Well, remember, if you want more accuracy, you need a wider interval. 
All right, if you make a wider interval, you can be more and more sure that the truth is in there somewhere. Okay, so a lower confidence, um, you're going to have a lower confidence interval if uh, you're looking at a more narrow interval. Okay, so the narrower the interval, the less confidence you are confident you are that the truth is in there. The wider the interval, the more confident you can be. Okay, so whichever one of these is narrower will be the 90%. Whichever one is wider will be the 99%. Okay, so let's see. Um, this one is wider uh, because it goes down to 114.1, uh, that's lower than this, and it goes up to 115.9, that's higher than this. So this is wider, so it must be the 99% confidence interval. This one is narrower, so it must be the 90%. Um, so you could write it up this way. A wider interval will give greater confidence. Therefore, the 99% confidence interval must be this one, and the 90% confidence interval must be this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, and uh, we'll have more problems to come uh, in the second half. All right, watch out for the next video.